reference to me, uh, uh, a lot has to do with their identity. I don't know if that will tie into my message. I hope it will. But I felt an attack on the identity as I was sitting there. You know, I know because of where my body is triggered by the spirit and what I know what he's trying to say, you know. So, but I'm still going to go with what I want to talk about. So we're going to have a food afterward. We're going to have games afterward. So I'm going to try not to make it too long. But I don't normally like to encourage questions for, for the reason is that sometimes a question will, 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 will be a foul ball and it'll just take us somewhere off topic. And so instead of letting the spirit lead me, Sometimes an offset question will lead us into some direction that God is not uh, is not leading us. Are you going to hurry back? Yeah. All right. We know, <laughs> like I said before, uh, we have to like, you know, use the restroom beforehand. You know what I'm saying? We need to do all that stuff before the worship. Eli, open the door, please. Anybody else uh, hot? Yes. Okay. If you guys don't listen, oh. Eli, you close the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So. If you have a relevant question, a question that seems to pertain to the issue, you know, and it doesn't take us too far, then it's, then, you know, I don't mind if you ask it, so this way we stay on the task, but I don't know, like, I think that God allows us to go through certain experiences so we can share them, if we can overcome them, you know? So, I don't really have a title because there's too many things to pick out, but I'm just going to kind of go with my notes, but I put attached sins through resentments and judgments. Because, you know, can anybody tell me what's another word in the Bible for sin? Have you remember that we had a lesson? What is it? Iniquity. Yeah, that's 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 not what I'm looking for, but it is true. That's a type of that's a type of uh, synonym for it. Okay. Close. That one but separation from God. What which means what did we what did what it's in the it's in Romans. Remember we had a whole lesson about it? And we had a whole study on it? Yes. Anybody, anybody want to hint? Do you know Anna? Yeah, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> he always. Well, what's the point of saying it? <laughs> because he he yeah. wants you guys to know it. Yeah. He wants you guys to say it. Well, remember, remember we were talking about it and how it relates to sickness, and then we <laughs> talked about how did Christ atone for our diseases? You know, on the cross. Remember, and and it talked about the origin of sin and what it was because a person says. A person, for example, they get sick and then they die. And so the person said, well, how do I relate uh, sickness to sin and death? They're all different, but they're, yet they're the same. Mm -hmm. Because if it had not been for sin, death would not have come in. Mm -hmm. Or by one man's sin, death entered in. So if a person is sick, all it really is saying is it's a type of death, not fully mature. Remember? Okay. <laughs> Just to refresh your, mind, your memories. So it's another word for, for sin. It's another word for death. Because death, a sin is in its childish form it's not mature enough to kill but it will when it matures does that make sense yes. yes so sin in the bible equals death according to the bible but but another word for sin is is offense okay let's go to romans 5 12 and we're gonna what we're gonna do is try to read it as a group so we can all move along and if you guys can try not to uh read ahead because remember we talked about how everybody should have their own biblical life and their own biblical prayer life and so for you to come and just read in here would be redundant because why did you come to church then? You could have just stay home and read it. <laughs> so we're going to read together so we can try to glean out of it something. Amen? Amen. So Romans 5.12. This will take a discipline. Somebody go hold Rhonda's eyes. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> just kidding. Hey, hey. Go ahead, Rhonda. Read first, uh, well, verse 12. Okay, hold on. I'm not there yet, Pastor. Oh. Yeah, she got distracted and read something else. <laughs> no, you <laughs> like today. Also, another good one. scripture. Who has Romans 5 12? Go ahead, Mark, let's read it. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world of death of sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. Amen. Okay, so that covers what I was just saying a moment ago. So when you think of sin, think of that it also means death, but it, it also means an offense. Now I'm going to try, Lord helping me in Jesus' name, to try to. Try to share something because I I never seen it this way, okay? Let's go to Romans 12, 17. Uh, say amen when you have it. Amen. 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 Uh, Daniel, you want to read it? Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Okay, now let's 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 get out of the scripture and think about what that was saying, okay? So 
Is he saying that it matters how people see you? If the scripture, the Holy Scripture is saying that we should, it says, do not repay anyone evil for good, evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. So it matters how people see us, how people view us, based on how we treat them. Amen? Amen. Uh, somebody read me verse 18. That was Romans 12, 18. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Okay, now let's get out of there for a second. <clears throat> I always, I learned it this way. Let's say, for example, I have an offense with somebody, right? And on my end, let's say it wasn't possible for me to make it right with them, right? Maybe they refused. Maybe they were angry. Maybe they were unforgiving. But I knew as a Christian that it's my job to forgive them because Jesus said that if we don't, then, you know, we receive a tormentor if we don't re release them. Amen. So what I always did is I always said to myself, okay, Lord, I'm going to forgive them even though they don't want anything to do with me. I'm going to release them. And that always worked until the other day. <laughs> Believe it or not, I, I, I'm going to share it with you. I don't know how it's going to sound, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, I'm going to just share something with you. That had always worked for me. So if it says as far as life within you, I can't make Daniel forgive me, right? But I can forgive him in my heart and then not do evil things to provoke him. And then he has the choice to whether he wants to forgive me or not, right? Okay, now i got to start all over. Just kidding. Stop it. <laughs> She's been on there all day. Okay, so. Like I said, thank you very much. So, you know, I always exercise trying to walk this out on my end. I have a disagreement with somebody, a fallout with them. They don't want anything to do with me. So in my heart, I've released them, right? And, and then I would often pray that the Lord would allow reconciliation so that there'd be an opportunity. Because as Christians, we're supposed to be not only forgiving, but we're supposed to be seeking to be at peace with everyone as far as lies in me. Well, if they won't talk to me, the least I can do is pray, you know? Right. And I thought about the new year, and I thought, oh, God, what can I do this, this year coming that I haven't been doing that I could do? And I thought to myself, well, I have a whole laundry list of enemies. I hate my guts. I'm starting with my family. I thought maybe I should start there, you know? <laughs> and uh, now these are curses, you know? These are curses that, you know, they come up. We don't ask for them. They're just there. It's called family breakdown. And if you if you have extended family and you talk to them, you're very, very blessed. Yes. And if you don't, blessed. then you may know what I'm talking about. So in my family, it's bad. It's like a cancer, you know? It's just eating away at people's souls. So I said, well, I'm going to start there. You know, so I began to pray that, you know, that uh, that the Lord would bless them. And I began to, like, forgive. Let's see here. Let's go to uh, verse 19. Let's see if I didn't mess up my notes like sometimes I do. Remember where we were? We were in Romans 12. Do not take revenge, my dear friend, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay. Okay. Somebody else read that one down. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Okay, now let's get out of it and meditate on that. This, in his version, is said, for the righteous God. Now, righteous God means he's a just God that he weighs. You know what I'm saying? So he's weighing, what's he weighing? He's weighing our heart like. Lord, I don't know what to do about this situation. This person's not going to talk to me. They're, they, they, they're upset at something. Maybe uh, maybe even you're justified on your end. You know, like they try to take advantage of you. They try to abuse or hurt you. And instead of allowing them to, maybe you could have used better words. Maybe you could have, you know, you could have did it different. But nonetheless, you were still asserting yourself because, you know, we as people have to have dignity and, and self-esteem and self-worth and self value because we're, you know and I'm going to get ahead of my notes but we're made in the image of God we're fearfully and wonderfully created the Bible says that we are his handiwork and as you begin to meditate on that you can think of anybody who has ever made anything amazing or made anything fantastic I mean just marvel at the works of something like even like a computer or you know an LED screen or you know like how does it work right if a man can make that but no, no man could make a, a, who could make a person? They're trying to, you know, 
but they could never make a person. There's no, no computer that's faster than our thinking processes, nothing. You know, so when you begin to think, gosh, there's a, there's a spirit of like, uh, not a heaviness no more, there's like a spirit in here, like a, a, there's a spirit of the Lord in here. Um, and uh, when you really think about it, if you think about people, right, and you really meditate on it, that, that, like, you can begin to get a revelation and really be out of God. You can be like, wow, like, you know, he like made a person, you know, that's like, as bad as we are, you know, yet he loved us so much that he gave his son. So there's got to be a value that he loved us so much. But yet we let allow other people to treat us like dirt, to manipulate us. And to assert ourselves doesn't mean that we have to do it violently. Like if I don't like how somebody is treating me, I don't have to be mean or aggressive. But I can say, you know, it's not all right what you're doing. You know, and sometimes that causes people to not forgive you. It makes people want to hate you. It makes people want to cut you off because you're saying you're not going to do that to me. No, you're not going to. You're not going to turn everyone against me and still talk to me in front of them like you're not doing what I know that you're doing. Now, something personal. <laughs> I know what you're doing. We all know what you're doing, and I'm not going to help you do it. It's not okay. I'm not your doormat. I could have, have did it nicer. Yeah, I could have. That's what I'm saying. But we learn, right? And we're human. We're not perfect. Amen? Amen. And so these things cause problems, you know? And so uh, there's a spiritual principle. So, okay, so the next verse was in 20. Uh, what we were just reading, that was uh, 12. I'm glad you guys have been attention. I can tell some of you are students here. I can see it in your eyes, especially uh, Desiree's, but she's not in here. Okay, verse 20, it says, on the contrary... If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heat burning coals on his head. How many of you has ever heard that scripture before? Amen. You know, I used to see that played out this way. Daniel, I use him for his closest. Next time, don't sit there. You know, if he, listen, <laughs> he mistreats me, you know, right? But I still, like, I'm nice to him, right? And I'm still nice to him that he's like... I always learned it this way, like eventually it would make him feel convicted and he'd be like, man, he's still nice to me even though I was mean to him, you know? And so eventually it would, it would capture the heart of the individual who'd been mistreating me. So the Bible used a metaphorical language saying they'll put heaping coals. So, I mean, God forbid it were to take some hot coals and put them on Daniel's head, he would not let me do it in the first place. But if I was able to get them there, he wouldn't have them there very long because he'd be running. I know I would, you know, nobody wants charcoals on your head, right? right? But the illustration the Bible gives is that if you allow somebody to be mean and you continue to be nice and love them, that it will bring a conviction so heavy on them that it will it will hurt their mind. I had always seen it that way. And then I seen it a different way. Mm -hmm. Me too. I seen it that if I respond the way the Bible says to respond and I realize that God is the ultimate righteous, just God, that he's going to weigh my heart versus theirs. If I chose to forgive them inside me, right, and I released them, that it's not just like that I'm expected to win them. Excuse me, excuse me for that, but if I told you it's, it's in here, I'm like, I'm like, Fran, tell get away from me. I want to talk here. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm forgiving them, right? Could it be that there's a spiritual judge in heaven that's actually releasing something on the person? Think about that. Now, the reason why I say that is because uh, we had a, a recent spiritual attack, right? And, you know, how many of us, how many of you know in here that we're all fighting extreme selfishness based on hurts, from being hurt? Mm -hmm. yeah. When you get hurt, when you're abused, when you're molested, when you're mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally abused, it makes you selfish because number one, you're never gonna let anybody do that in life again. That's right. So you look out for yourself. Come you know, on. well, we're all learning to not be that way. That's you know, right. we don't want to be that way. That's right. So, <laughs> I a little bit of my guinea pig. So, <laughs> I've been working with her for years and years now. Just so, just FYI, all the glory goes to God. Yes. Because we cannot fix. Now, sometimes in our dysfunctions, we think that we can fix somebody. Well, I'm just gonna fix her. I'm gonna fix. Him, I can fix them. <laughs> no, no, only God can do that. But we right. want to do that. Okay, this is going yeah. off topic a little bit. You know, <laughs> we think that we can fix other people, but we can't. That's right. You know, so uh, uh, so recently, so 
And as much as I try to fix her, there's one thing I can't fix because God has to fix her. And it's <laughs> seeing everything. I know she doesn't mind me exposing all her most intimate weaknesses oh and God. deepest fears and if dysfunctions, you know? <laughs> you have a wife, you can do that to them, you know? So I'm going to lay, lay oh, bare wow. all her uh, inadequacies and fears. You know, I'm and, not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> all her dysfunctions and everything. I'm going to just lay them all out here. <laughs> but there's one thing that I've been telling her, you know, I, I, but do you know what the first key to being delivered from something is to recognize it. You cannot be delivered of something you cannot see or Come you on. don't know what it is. That's if right. you don't know it's there, you can't get rid of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know? Amen. It's like the, you know, you know, like a lot of you guys, you know, I mean, me and Rhonda don't know anything about this, but it's like the one white hair. You know, you won't be able to see it. Oh. You know? <laughs> uh, me and Rhonda's case, we see them very good. <laughs> <laughs> She starts to hide them. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, At least you're blonde. You can kind of walk well, with Chris and our friend over here, uh, Jeannie. You can kind of blend them in. <laughs> it's not for Chris in there. It's your fault. So. <laughs> He's on a good one today, guys. I'm sorry. So, okay. I'm going to get my top back. <laughs> What was that? The first step to deliver? You have to recognize it. it. Recognize. Yeah, thank you. Let's see if that gets me back. I'm trying to have fun and not cry, okay? Like a nine-year-old girl. <laughs> so, about a week before, remember remember that last prayer cruise when we came and I had my hands on Anna's head? Remember that? Okay. Now, Anna wasn't feeling like, you know, I just want to you know, break down right now, and, uh, you know, I want to cry, and I want to feel grieved, you know, because I have nothing better to do. No. <laughs> there was n there was nothing wrong that day. No one had harassed her, as they sometimes do at work, you know. No one had abused her or picked on her. I hadn't that day, you know, and no one else, <laughs> to my knowledge, had. But yet, she had a heaviness and a depression that she was fighting, and very, very strong thoughts came to her that were very, very negative, and particularly towards me, which was very annoying on my end. <laughs> so, but she's been learning, and as I have been teaching her based on the revelation of the things that I have observed, because, you know, one thing that God has shown me is how to notice things and how to recognize them. And so whatever I learn, I try to teach it, because why should I word up anything? They're like, I try to learn things about physical healing that I've taught some of you guys, and some of you guys have learned it, and some of you guys have, are using it, and I know people that they know all kinds of stuff. They won't teach you one thing. It doesn't make any sense to me because they're going to die with that if they don't show somebody. You know, so we got to show people what we learn. So I was paying attention, but I wasn't really paying attention, but I was paying attention. I was thinking, hmm, that's odd. And then, uh, and then other things started coming to her. Other pains started coming to her. So I started to just observe her more and more. And uh, she started developing like pain in her, in her right side of her neck. Now, I hadn't noticed that, but I did notice other things going on in my body. And uh, uh, Now, not to give the devil any glory, but I'll just say in my organs, okay? Now, number one, you have to know yourself. Remember I've always taught you guys that? That you need to know yourself from head to toe. You need to really know yourself because the body seems to reflect what's going on in the spirit. Yes. It's an indicator. It gives you the symptoms, not necessarily the cause, but by the symptoms, you can trace the root of that thing if you pay attention. So, she told me from because based on on the terminology that, that I that I that I begin to compile and put together, uh, many times the right has to do with the male and the left has to do with the female. So, based on that knowledge that she had, she just used what she knew, which is basically what the Lord showed me and I taught her. She told me, you know what? There seems to be a male rising up. Uh, and uh, and she said it in faith because, <clears throat> you know, when you say that and nothing happens and you think, well, you know, I was wrong. I was wrong. And so our pride, sometimes we don't want to shoot at it, right? But it was true because the Lord doesn't always confirm your faith. Sometimes he will, sometimes he won't. And I told her, well, you got a confirmation of your faith because it, but when we were in the store, I got a very attacking text from a, from a, from a family member. <laughs> And, 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 and I laugh because it has a very similar a very similar history that I do, but he was attacking me with my own history. I thought, fool, you've been to prison too. You know what I'm saying? 
What are you talking about? You know, and so I tried not to react because 